Thank you. I should be at least as excited as Malcolm is about these beautiful results. <laughs> and I would be if I weren't so damn tired from reading Planck papers. <laughs> Let me start more formally by saying it's an honor to talk about Planck here at an institute that nurtured the project for so many years. And it's a huge pleasure for me to be talking about the cosmic microwave background, uh, a subject that I've been involved in for something like 48 years, chasing those photons of ancient light. I'd like to begin about the time that Malcolm left off, 1913, 100 years ago. Cosmology was very far from being a science at that point. Indeed, it was not even clear whether the universe consisted of more than our own Milky Way galaxy, an error, incidentally, of a factor of about 10 to the 11th. Even 50 years ago, it was possible for a very distinguished physicist to write that cosmology is nothing but a dream of zealots, and I quote exactly. The point he was making is that there's very little observation, or was very little observational evidence. But even 50 years ago, we knew one important thing, and that is that the universe is an expanding system. A uh, discovery made. Uh -huh. Discovery made that the battery is not working. Uh -huh. Malcolm pushed the button more forcefully. <laughs> This was a discovery made by Edwin Hubble. As we look out to more and more distant galaxies, they're moving away from us in a very regular fashion. But even 50 years ago, there was a sharp debate raging within the cosmological community about the simple question of whether the universe had a history. Did it begin in a hot big bang, in which case its past was very different from its present? Or was it a history less eternal expansion called the steady state. That was being actively debated. Many people favored the steady state model. But a little more than 48 years ago, that question was decisively settled by the discovery of the cosmic right wave background. Let's see if I can make it work. By these two gentlemen, Penzias and Wilson. The cosmic microwave background firmly established was almost instantly accepted as firmly establishing the fact that the universe did have a hot Big Bang origin, that it does have a history, a past, and an age. And as a teaser for the next talk, you'll be hearing about a redefinition of the age of the universe in just a moment. So what I want to do now is to turn to why it is that the heat left over from the Big Bang, discovered by these two gentlemen and interpreted nearby in Princeton, has been so important in defining aspects of modern cosmology. I'm going to slip throughout this talk and refer to it as a CMB. By that, I mean the cosmic microwave background. But why the importance of the CMB? And I would argue it stems from three things. First, the existence of the CMB makes the early universe a simple system, simple and predictable. Second, the CMB makes the early universe accessible to us and do observations. And third, CMB measurements, as you'll hear shortly, have provided much needed precision, to echo Malcolm's remarks, in cosmology. These properties are linked with some of the pieces of evidence needed to show that the microwave background was indeed cosmic. And that's where I'll start in the next slide. If the cosmic microwave background is, as we now believe, left over from a hot, dense phase early in the history of the universe, it ought to have a very characteristic spectrum. That is, a plot of intensity or brightness versus frequency or wavelength. The kind of spectrum that is imprinted on radiation if it's in thermal equilibrium. What I show here is evidence from both ground-based observations and satellites. Those are the points superimposed on a black body curve. Excellent agreement, strong evidence that the universe started in a state of higher density and higher temperature. Indeed, in order to produce the thermal equilibrium which gives rise to such a spectrum, the universe needed to be about 10 to the eighth times hotter and something like 10 to the 24 power more dense. Clearly, we're talking about a very different universe from the one we inhabit the universe does have a history. And that history is one of cooling and a gradual decrease of density. 
but we're allowed to be quite quantitative about the change in temperature with time and the change of density with time. And I want to emphasize that point. We can predict how density and temperature change with high precision. And that allows us, to some degree at least, to play the movie of expansion of the universe backwards. As we go back earlier in time, the universe was hotter and denser, as shown in this figure, which incidentally is taken from the paper of Dickey Peebles, Roll, and Wilkinson that first interpreted the microwave background as cosmic. What you see is a plot of temperature, it's a logarithmic plot, and in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see rho m representing the density of matter. As we go back in time, it rises. But notice also that there's a density of radiation. That's now much less than the density of matter in the universe, but the density of radiation increases more rapidly as we go back in time. So if you go back early enough in time, the radiation was entirely dominant. Radiation was dominant, and it has a very characteristic spectrum. So the properties of the early universe were directly predictable once you know the present temperature of the universe. Having made that statement, it's possible then to make some predictions about what happened in the early universe. And I'll give two examples. The first is that when the temperature of the universe was about 10 to the ninth Kelvin, that incidentally is about three minutes after the initial Big Bang, the conditions were such to convert about 24% of the matter in the universe from hydrogen nuclei to helium nuclei. Just think for a moment about how audacious that statement is. I'm sitting up here claiming that we knew what was going on in the universe three minutes after its origin, when its temperature was higher than the central temperature of the sun. We're also making the assertion that the laws of physics, which we know from the laboratory, were working at that very early time at those extreme conditions. So you predict 24% by mass helium. You go out and observe the early stars, and what you find is 24% by mass helium. A beautiful confirmation of the hot Big Bang model. And there's a second that I'll ask you to keep in mind. You can also use the same pieces of physics at roughly the same time in the history of the universe to make a statement about how much ordinary matter, baryonic matter to use a technical term, but neutrons, protons, electrons, the stuff that makes us up and stars and planets. And the answer that comes out from this piece of physics is that there's very little such baryonic matter in the universe. Just keep that in mind. So what I've been emphasizing is that the simplicity introduced by radiation domination helps us make predictions that turn out to be correct. Next, I want to turn to the issue of accessibility. And here I'm going to ask you to reason with me for just a bit. In any direction in which we look out, we see back in time. If we look at the sun, we're seeing light that left the sun's surface eight minutes ago. In any direction in which we look far enough back, we see closer to the beginning of the universe. The beginning of the universe then must be uniformly distributed around us so that heat left over from the beginning of the universe should be uniform in all directions. And that's what I'm showing here. The orange blob is a picture of the microwave sky. Now I'm in trouble. Okay. I want to make two points about this picture. First, it represents the entire sky. What we've done is to take the spherical surface of the microwave sky, strip it out and flatten it into two dimensions in exactly the same way that the spherical surface of the Earth is stripped out and flattened in the lower picture. So this represents the entire sky. The second is that it's clearly uniform. And what's represented here by the color orange is the intensity of the radiation. The intensity is the same everywhere. It has a characteristic temperature of about 2.7 Kelvin. I'm not by any matter of means for the outside audience claiming that the universe is orange in color, although I'm told the Dutch would like that. I am instead claiming that the temperature is uniform. 
Next question, what do we see when we make such an image? And the argument is that it's a particular surface early in the history of the universe, about 370,000 years after the Big Bang, in which the universe suddenly became transparent. I'll skip over these next slides. Not that one. The argument then is that we see a surface of the universe at about 370,000 years after the Big Bang. The next question is, what should be visible on that surface? And here I want to make the argument that the density in the universe at that time cannot have been absolutely uniform. It was largely uniform, but not absolutely uniform. Small regions of higher density and lower density corresponding to regions of slightly higher and slightly lower temperature. So it's true that the universe is almost the same in all directions but not quite. And what we've done here in this picture, which is of course the gorgeous Planck photograph of the universe, is to strip away the average temperature and leave just the fluctuations. Fluctuations that are at a level of tens of microkelvin, that is roughly speaking 0.001% of the average temperature. Those regions of inhomogeneity had to be there in order to lead to the structure we see today. The regions of higher density grew into the structures we see today. Now I want to go back, if I may, to this picture. I want to make an additional point, and that is that the details of the amplitude and the size of these regions of higher and lower temperature tells us a vast amount about important properties of the universe. And I want to make a distinction between amplitude, that is the difference in temperature between the hot and cold regions, let's say between the orange and the blue, of order tens of microkelvin, and the size, which is the angular size on the sky. Comparing the amplitude of fluctuations at different sizes tells us a great deal. You'll hear more about that in much greater detail and more elegantly explained in a moment. Let me just do it qualitatively and talk about some of the results that we can get from looking at the amplitude and size of these peaks. The amplitude of the peaks and troughs tells us that there must be dark matter in the universe. If we relied solely on the small amount of baryonic matter, the fluctuations would have to be much larger in amplitude, and they're not. Slightly more detailed studies tell us that the density of ordinary matter in protons, neutrons, and electrons is very small. The microwave background tells you the same thing that calculations from the properties of the early universe tells you. There's a solidity in the agreement of these various aspects of modern cosmology. A uh, further study also tells you when the first stars heated up the universe. The evidence is at least consistent with a period of super rapid expansion very early in the history of the universe, which has come to be called inflation. Uh, I want to emphasize that we are talking about a very early time, a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second or less. We're talking about an expansion that spans something like 20 orders of magnitude and took place in less than 10 to the minus 30 seconds. That phase left an imprint on the CMB. And that phase was radically different from the slow and gentle expansion we see now. So we have evidence of very different physics occurring in the early Big Bang. The size, the angular size of the fluctuations tells us something about the geometry of space. It is Euclidean, or flat. It didn't have to be. Einstein's theory of general relativity permits positive and negative curvature, but the universe doesn't have that property. It's flat in its geometry. And then you'll hear more about this in a moment, but further studies from the Planck data allow us to make assertions that the physical constants are indeed constant, that the number of light species like neutrinos is limited to three, and that the sum of the masses is extremely small. So there's a really rich yield 
which you'll be hearing about in just a moment. Now, I don't want to give the impression, particularly with Wendy Friedman in the audience, that the microarray background is the only avenue to learning about cosmology. There are many others. Today, we're celebrating the microarray background, so I'm simply going to zip through some of the others, starting with exploding stars, gravitational lensing, the expansion rate of the local universe, large-scale structure, masses of clusters of galaxies. And the point is that all of these agree. They're giving us a standard picture. And furthermore, they all agree to very high precision, or to good precision, let me say, with the microwave background. I have somewhat uh, boastfully put the microwave background in the middle because of its importance. And I want to end by making the following point. If you will accept with me that the microarray background has been very rich in providing cosmological information, it's easy to understand why astronomers want better and better images of this surface at 370,000 years after the Big Bang. <coughs> the field started with the COBE satellite, which was the first, <coughs> some 20 years ago, to detect fluctuations in the microarray background. Faint and large and angular scale. The beautiful results from the WMAP satellite that came along about a decade later pinned down the amplitude of the fluctuations where they have their maximum at about a degree. And what Planck is giving us is increased precision, increased resolution. And I'd like to make the claim that Planck is doing for this picture of the early universe what Van Eyck did for painting precise, clear pictures. Thank you. And to end, thank the taxpayers of Europe and North America for allowing me the pleasure of participating in this project. <laughs>